Hey everyone, welcome to Crypto News Simplified. My name is Ali and today is February 28th, 2022. So let's just jump right into the news. Uh, up first, we got Gala Games. You know, Spider Tank's beta testing is open to all. So this is pretty cool. Um, I love Gala Games. Their games are a lot of fun and I look forward to the games they're releasing. And with this game, you don't need to own a tank to play. So you can see that here, that's very, very cool. Uh, it's pretty much free to play to get in. It's a beta test, so I imagine there really won't be any money earning, but uh, you can download the client off of their official website. You will have to create a Gala Games account and uh, try it out if you're into gaming. All right, up next, we have Trader Joe. This is a decentralized exchange on the Avalanche network, um, and they have a new pool that just opened up, the S. Joe pool. So basically you stake their Joe token and you receive USDC stablecoin as a reward. So that's pretty cool. A lot of people were looking forward to this and uh, Trader Joe doing a lot of things in the Avalanche network. Up next we have FC Barcelona and AS Roma fan tokens rally after Socius partners with UEFA. So basically Socius decided to partner with the UEFA which is the governing body for European football, and Socios is a protocol that focuses on the creation of fan tokens. Um, so in the statement, they said, a new era. We are thrilled to announce that UEFA club comp competition fan tokens are coming to the Socios app. Fan tokens will be exclusively available for free to fan token holders of clubs participating in the Champions League, Europa League, Europa CNF League, and... Uh, yeah, those three leagues. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, with fan tokens, they usually you get cool NFTs. Uh, you get tokens that you get to vote in changes to the organization, like jersey changes, you know, the jersey designs and stuff. So that's cool that um, it seems that out of all the sports, the soccer teams are really going in full into crypto. So that's pretty cool because soccer, you know, is one of the world's biggest sports, really. So... Look forward to seeing how that goes. Up next, the what the launch of the FBI Crypto Task Force means for the digital asset space. So if you haven't heard, the FBI has created up a new uh, task force called the Virtual Asset Expo Exploitation Unit, or VAXU, V-A-X-U for short. So it's bringing a bunch of people together from various units of the FBI with crypto expertise to conduct investigations that use blockchain analysis and can result in virtual assets seizure. So basically one of their statements, uh, they were saying ransomware and digital extortion, like many other crimes fueled by cryptocurrency, only work if the bad guys get paid, which means we have to bust this business model. The currency might be virtual, but the message to companies is concrete. If you report to us, we can follow the money and not only help you, but hopefully prevent the next victim. So the the Vaxu is going to work with, uh, it's going to be under, despite, yeah, it's going to be a part of the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team, NCET, which was launched in October 2021. And the NCET targets money launderers and cyber criminals. So basically the U.S. government is finally getting serious about crypto you know and as as far as crypto being used for criminal activities um i just wish the u.s government would get serious about the tax laws of crypto because it's such a headache <laughs> all right so up next we got avalanche all right one of my favorite blockchains avalanche blockchain now accessible to 4.5 million users across wirex payment ecosystem so if you don't know about Wirex, it's like an app um, where you can use, they give you, you know, you can get a debit card through them and you can spend your crypto coins, you can stake your crypto coins, you can trade your crypto coins. So there's a lot of things you can do. And so they finally integrated the Avalanche blockchain, which is pretty cool. Um, Wirex acts, has access to over 61 million locations worldwide. Um, it's going to, in the future, add custom tokens via the Avalanche blockchain. So probably, you know, some of the top Avalanche protocols coins will come over to Wirex, like Joe, like, uh, I don't know, Krabata. <laughs> I can't think of any right now, but 
you know, there, there's a lot of avalanche stuff, um, tokens, a lot of big protocols. So it looks like Wirex will start adding some of those coins to it. And in this app, you can earn 20% APY on your AVAX. So if you uh, stake it to their X accounts. So that's pretty cool. The company has over 4.5 million users in more than 120 countries across its app, wallet, and payment platforms. So that's really good news for, for Avalanche. Um, and it gives a lot more people access to this really awesome chain. Up next, we have eBay to add crypto payment options soon. So this was probably one of the biggest news stories of the day. Um, eBay is looking to become the marketplace for millennials and Gen Z, um, which, you know, it'd be really cool if they made a decentralized marketplace like this, you know, kind of like an open sea, but for instead of NFTs, you're selling actual product. Um, so it would be cool if eBay could do this, but I imagine it's probably going to be another company that's another company or just a bunch of random developers that band together and do this. Um, so yeah, they're looking to add crypto. Uh, I've heard different, you know, people online saying they're going to add just Bitcoin or just Bitcoin, Ethereum and Dogecoin. Um, but I really don't know what they're going to add. It'd be cool if they just connected to MetaMask and called it a day so you can use any crypto that you want, you know. Um, so we'll see how how this will work out. Uh, they haven't given a time frame to this that I've seen. So... We'll see. It says here, you know, eBay, eBay first tried integrating Bitcoin payments in 2014. And I guess, you know, back then, Bitcoin wasn't as user friendly as it is now. Crypto wasn't as user friendly uh, for the average person to understand. It took hours of research. I know because I was one. And so now that it's, you know, it's come a long way. There's apps now that you can use. The wallets are a lot more friendly. So, um, it would be cool if eBay can pull this off and I hope people, you know, will take to it and that it'll help drive that mass adoption that we've all been waiting for. Up next, we have USDT Tether records new all-time high against Russian ruble as inflation hits. So that's really not a surprise uh, with everything going on in Russia and Ukraine. Um, you know, and it says here, because the Russian ruble, the ruble is the is the main currency of Russia, you know, uh, it pretty much started tanking since everything happened. All these sanctions were coming out against Russia. So the Russian central bank doubled the interest rates from 9.5% to 20%. So that's their way to try and stabilize their, their dollar, the ruble. Um, I'm not sure if it's working, uh, but we'll see over the next couple days. But as you can see here in this graph, this is just absolutely insane. That's just a straight shot up. And uh, it's pretty crazy to see. Um, and for the first time in history, it says that the trading pair crossed 105 rubles. So that's pretty crazy. And, you know, I, I feel for the Russian people out there. And I wouldn't want to be in, in, their, uh, in their shoes. And especially now that SWIFT which is the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication Messaging System, they released a statement saying, second, we will paralyze the assets of Russia's central bank. This will freeze its transactions and it will make it impossible for the central bank to liquidate its assets. So there's a lot going on to this, but I think one of the reasons we're seeing the surge in crypto has to do with all these things going on in, in Ukraine and in Russia. Um, Honestly, like your dollar is really not safe in your bank account anymore. It's probably safer in, in crypto. And I personally would do UST over USDT, but, you know, to each their own. Up next, this is probably one of the coolest stories. Um, and I'm really interested to see what the goal of South Korea is. So South Korea wants to invest $187 million in a national metaverse project. Okay, and what they're looking to do is they're looking to, co to connect all their major corporations, um, education, media, into this whole ecosystem to support the growth of digital content and corporate growth within the country. So this is something that, that they're looking to expand, not only in South Korea, but into make it a global thing as well, you know, so that maybe make it easier for companies to hold global meetings where you don't have to fly 
to different countries to hold a meeting, uh, make it easier for the children in school to to go visit different areas of the world, you know, on a field trip, you know, field trip through the metaverse. Um, I'm really not sure what their plan is. You know, they've been kind of hush hush about it, but they are they did publicly announce that they will be building a metaverse. So I, I imagine it will be. I don't know, it might be an interactive reality, you know, an augmented reality, uh, where that would be really cool, or it might be virtual completely, or a mix of both, so, um, you know, the Hash CEO, Simon Kim, he points out that it is the regulatory issue that the government should pay more attention to. In Korea, publishing of NFT games is prohibited, and token issuance is also prohibited. So this right here I saw, you know, he talked about this was concerning because the whole point of crypto and the metaverse is so that you can own your own stuff, you know, like actually own it. And that's what an NFT means. So, well, I guess it says NFT games, but I just hope they change their stance, stance on that. But he does go on to say that it is important to create a world-class metaverse ecosystem as a starting point to intensive intensive intensively foster a new hyper-connected industry so again I, i'm curious to see how this is going to work out for south korea i'm curious to see what their plan is uh, and how they plan to connect everything um it'll be very interesting so i look forward to seeing that that'll probably take you know a couple years for them to develop but they're the only country that i know of that's doing this so yeah that's pretty cool up next so back to the ukraine russia thing you know, Ukraine asked a bunch of uh, exchanges, six crypto exchanges, uh, to block Russian customers. So they reached out to Coinbase, Binance, Huobi, Huobi KuCoin, Bybit, Gate.io, and Whitebit, along with the Ukra Ukrainian exchange Kuna. So basically, they're asking that they block addresses of Russian users. Um, Coinbase did respond that they don't have plans to to uh, to block all Russian users, but they are taking actions to block certain uh, citizens that are sanctioned. So I'm sure oligarchs that are sanctioned. But, uh, you know, their statement was, it's our mission is to increase economic freedom. A unilateral and total ban would punish ordinary Russian citizens. And I agree with this. You know, the ruble is tanking right now, and the only other option for these people is crypto. Uh, because to get America dollars in there, or even the Chinese yen, like, that's pretty much impossible right now. You can't just go to a bank and just request for, you know, Chinese yen, or, or sorry, Chinese yuan. And uh, so their option, the only option is crypto. And so it would be, it would be, I think, pretty mean for these exchanges to block, uh, to block the Russian people when they really, you know, they don't have a say in what their government does. And if we go over here, we have Jesse Powell, and he was the, um, he is, I'm sorry, the CEO of Kraken, and he made a statement yesterday about this. He says, I understand the rationale for this request, but despite my deep respect for the Ukrainian people, Kraken cannot freeze the accounts of our Russian clients without a legal requirement to do so. Russians should be aware that such a requirement could be imminent. So that's pretty scary because right now he's pretty much saying that he understands why people are asking for him to freeze Russian uh, clients' accounts, but he's not going to do it. But he could be required to, uh, and that could that that could happen. He could be forcibly by law required to close their accounts or freeze their assets. So this is also why it's important not to keep your crypto on exchanges. I know a lot of people get lazy. It's easy to do. You can just buy your Bitcoin and just leave it there. But if it's not your private keys, it's not your coin. Okay, that is like the alma mater of crypto. Not your keys, not your coins. Anyways, Jesse goes on to say, that requirement can come from your own government as we have seen in Canada, which did happen, yeah. In response to protests, bank runs, and attempts to flee the country. It could come from foreign states like the U.S. as a weapon to turn the Russian populace against its government's policies. Uh, FWIW, I would guess that the vast majority of crypto holders on Kraken FX are anti-war. 
Bitcoin is the embodiment of libertarian values, which strongly favor individualism and human rights. In Canada, crypto was the only financial world left for those who opposed the regime. That's true. In Canada, when they had all the trucker protests, you know, Justin Trudeau shut down people's bank accounts, froze their assets, and he had he tried to shut down people's crypto accounts. And, uh, of course, the exchanges, the Canadian exchanges, had to comply but if your money, if your crypto's in your wallet, you don't have to worry. Um, so that's, you know, put your crypto in your wallet. <laughs> so he also goes on to say, our mission at Kraken FX is to bridge individual humans out of the legacy financial system and bring them into the world of crypto, where arbitrary lines on maps no longer matter, where they don't have to worry about being caught in broad and discriminate wealth confiscation. Sometimes, the hardest thing about having power is knowing when not to use it. Our mission is better served by focusing on individual needs above those of any government or political faction. The people's money is an exit strategy for humans, a weapon for peace, not for war. Besides, if we were going to voluntarily freeze financial accounts of residents of countries unjustly attacking and provoking violence around the world, step one would be to freeze all U.S. accounts. Ooh. As a practical matter, that's not really a viable business option for us. So talk about bringing the fire. Uh, I loved that last that last tweet right there because it's so true. The U.S. is one of the worst for toppling uh, other countries' governments, du duly elected governments. Um, so I really like Jesse Powell. Uh, I agree with what he said, and the Russians really need to, uh, you know, if I were them, if I were in Russia, I'd be putting my money into crypto and taking it out of the exchanges and putting it somewhere safe um so that's pretty much it for the news uh this is my first video so i did just some short you know news clips that i saw throughout the day uh please get back to me with any feedback if you guys like this um and i look to be updating the crypto news every day monday through friday probably around 9 p.m um and so yeah please like subscribe and share with your friends and thank you guys i hope you all have a great day